Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. I'm the one and only Big Game Dame. I'm here with my main man, Do. And we are not doing a Ralph Lauren commercial, for those who are watching. Strange coincidence, okay? But you owe us money, Polo. Okay, so you know what? Let's cut to the chase. No hyperbole. Let's get right to it. Philadelphia 76ers. We're not even doing a setup here. We all know what happened. Ben Simmons demanding to be O-U-T. Yeah. Um, when I first heard the news, I was I was disappointed. Um, I've, I've been steadfast in saying don't trade him for pennies on a dollar or 50 cents on a dollar. And for five minutes, I let the, uh, my emotions get the best of me. I'm like, get him out of here. I'm mm -hmm. done with him. But then once I calmed down, thought about it, I'm not giving into it. But I, I, I feel like um, he has a lot of nerve. Audacity. Yeah, I mean, this is this is this is clearly not taking responsibility. This is deflecting and not taking blame. And he's using the um, the post game press conferences of his coach and his teammate to distract us from the fact of he was horrible. He was he, like he he literally took I believe three shots in the all fourth quarters of the seven game series against Atlanta. He passed up a dunk in the guts of the fourth quarter of Game 7 at home. And to be offended that your coach said, I don't know if we can win if my point guard is going to play like that. To be offended if the best player says, you know, up until that point, I, I, I thought we had this game. Where is the – I'll let you guys down. Like, I, Where's the personal accountability? Where is it? But – this goes back to what I was saying to you before about the Sixers and their front office and about having no vets, nobody to mold these young players. The Sixers' infrastructure is horrible. Agreed. Think about this. This team has won 50 games each of the last four seasons. Technically, last year it was 49, but it was like 10 games cut short. So they would have won 50 again. When do you ever see a team or a franchise – put together that type of consecutive streak, but in the last six years have had four different general managers. I mean, think about it. We went from Hankey to Colangelo to Elton Brand to Dal Morey. And why? Because of the whole gimmick process. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. You see, I, I'm not going to go there because, I, I, in theory, I was on board with the process. I, in theory, I liked it. They just, they just fumbled. They didn't execute it properly. And the problem is... How do you set a culture when you're constantly turning over your general manager every year and a half? And that's what I want to get to. And it's so, and here's the, here's the, life is so ironic, the beauty of its irony. The Sixers coddled Embiid and Simmons. And you remember when Magic Johnson a couple years ago, because Simmons can't shoot yes. into an ocean and Magic wanted to pull him aside and all these other players. And they're like, oh, we can't let him, we can't let him play there. We can't let him play with Magic. What if he wants to go to the Lakers? Let's give him all this money. We don't want him to leave. Let's coddle him because we don't want him to leave. And the irony is, what happens when you coddle him? See, what happens when you <clears throat> baby him? He wants <clears throat> to leave. The reason that I tried to continuously get his front office a pass was because I tried to Think they don't know what they don't know, meaning you know you had a first time owner, so he doesn't really know the lay of the land. <clears throat> Sam Hankey was never the GM. His first GM job was here. Like I said, in theory, I was on board with what he wanted to do. Um, I don't need to go through the reasons why we have all these GMs in that short time, but as a new if I'm buying something new and I'm not privy to it, I want somebody in my organization that knows the lay of the land. I want somebody that can help navigate me through it where we don't make those mistakes that first-timers make. Like if, if you get a, a guide or a handbook that say, listen, these are the mistakes I made, so you shouldn't make these same mistakes. And I just think Josh Harris on down – they just dropped the ball. They didn't bring anybody but, in there but an, an adult, so Let's to speak. be honest about Josh Harris, though. He's mm -hmm. one of these acquisition guys. He doesn't he doesn't know anything about Philadelphia. He doesn't care about Philadelphia or the culture or anything like that. He doesn't even care about basketball. 
He oh. brought in the. Think about Jeff Lurie and think about Pat Croce when they first ran the franchise, the Eagles and the Sixers. Pat Croce fell with Brad Greenberg, but he learned from that. Okay. okay. Jeff Lurie talked to everybody, everyone on earth that knew anything about football. Do you really think Josh Harris put, put that type of work in to understand the game? You think to this day and to this moment he understands the game? But like, see, I don't see it. But see, that's I don't the, see that commitment. That's the point I'm trying to make, though, because he didn't know what he didn't know. And I feel like hopefully now it's been corrected with Daryl Morey, who is a seasoned veteran when it comes to being a general manager who knows the lay of the land. So I, I, I hope that you, what he's already going through or went through, he's learned. My friend, you are 100% correct. Mm -hmm. He might have learned, but the toothpaste is out the tube. The toothpaste is out the tube. The horses are, the horses that left the barn, mm -hmm. they are nowhere to be seen. But to, um, but to bring it back full circle, like I said, that is a trickle-down effect. And there's nobody that I think Ben and Joe respect. Even somebody that was here before that might still have ties to the Sixers organization that could pick up the phone and say, and call uh, Ben, you know, like, this is my young boy. Hey, Ben, what's going on, man? Let me talk to you. And somebody that Ben trusts, somebody that, you know, helped mold him. You don't even have that. There's nobody like you can say, hey, can you, can you, can you talk to Ben for us? Can and, you be a liaison? And that's why I want to ask you in a minute or two, what would you actually say to the principals involved in this mm -hmm. situation? But is Ben, you think Ben Simmons would actually be open to listen to anyone? Like, honestly, he comes off like a guy that's been coddled his whole life. He's been the best player his whole life in Australia. And he comes over here and just the speed of the game, the intensity of the game, even when he went to LSU and not one of the top programs where and we're going to get into this. Mm -hmm. um, as a teacher, you know, that's what I do in my real life. Mm -hmm. Failure avoidance. And you see it a lot of times. Um, I taught gifted and talented for years. And that's one of the things that you see in regards to a lot of people who are highly, quote unquote, gifted, is they become failure avoiders when they start to compete against people who are on their level or people who are just flat out more competitive than they are because it's not easy. It, when the, let me put it this way. The game stopped being easy for Ben mm -hmm. on certain levels. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing a lot of his actions are failure avoiding. When I bring that up, what, what do you think about that? Um, I, I kind of understand what you're saying there, but if, if I'm going to agree with what you're saying to me, the way you solve that problem is normally you put gifted people or special people around people who are not gifted, people who are not special. And they get to see how special they are. And then you might not have that failure. You want to avoid failure because you realize that I do something at a very yeah. high level that many people can't do. You surround and, them with hard workers. Yeah, You, you do you, not want a team of the same yeah, people, gifted folks pe like people, Ben Simmons. You don't want a team of Ben Simmons. Yeah, people who can get through to them how special they are and maybe you, then they won't take it for granted or then they won't feel entitled because it's like, man, I didn't realize I was this good or this much better than everybody else because like that it helps um what's the word I wanna use? It helps like bring you down a notch. Like where you're not as cocky. This the Sixers championship run and contention, I'm gonna flat out say it ended. The day they traded Jimmy Butler, because he was that person. He was that he was that character person on the court. I don't know what happened off the court. Okay. I mean But on the court, he was that person. And I don't think anyone can argue that. And they don't have that. And that was their opportunity. And they they lost out on it. They chose Brett Brown. They chose the coddling atmosphere. And you know Jimmy Butler, we all know, he said it, wasn't happy with the culture here. He came in and they're treating these guys like they won three, four, five championships. And now this is where you are. Like, I, like you said, once again, it goes back to the front office. And it goes back to, um, like I said, setting a culture within the organization. And unfortunately, this organization has let the players, like, run them up. They're, yeah. they're, they're, there's no accountability. And as you said earlier, if you feel as though the toothpaste is out the tube, then what can you do? 
It's like anything. It's like if you're as I'll go back to being a teacher again. You lose the classroom, you're done. Mm -hmm. The second you lose the classroom, you're done. Okay. So we're gonna wrap it up, but really quick, I'll kind of edit it and we'll go into more details on this. Let, let's just go to Ben Simmons. If there, one thing you could tell or say to Ben Simmons directly right now, what would it be? I would say, where's your heart? I'm like, are are you home? Like, do you want to come back and right a wrong? Do you want to accept? Your part and what happened, like Kobe and all these yeah, great I, star players would. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Kyle, I wouldn't sit there and be like, you know, you're right, and that's no. I would just say, listen, let's call a spade a spade. At the end of the day, if you would have performed seventy five percent of what you did in a regular season, that series is a cakewalk. Mm -hmm. You got to take responsibility for it. You're the reason that they lost the series. Now. Do you want to come back and say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to right that wrong. I'm going to put the team on my back and we got unfinished business. Or you want to tuck your tail between your legs and be like, I'm out. I can't deal with it. And that's going to tie in really quick with what I need to say about I would say to Ben Simmons directly. The NBA is a global sport. Philadelphia did not clown you. OK, Joel Embiid is full of it when he said that the fans, the fans don't got nothing to do with all you guys being butthurt. OK, so Ben, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. The Onion was clowning you, okay? That don't got nothing to do with Philadelphia. The NBA is a global sport. It's not the NFL. You can't hide in Golden State. There's nowhere to hide. Everyone's going to be watching you no matter what rock you try to crawl under. You need to get, if you want the money and you want the accolades, you want to go to Wimbledon and all that nonsense, then you need to play like Kobe. You need to be like Kobe. You need to have some heart. You need to start playing like a man. Or you know what? Go back to Australia. Be the best player in Australia again. Because enough of this nonsense. Enough of it. That's the way that's the way I look at it. You're wasting somebody else's time. You're wasting someone else's spot. And you need to you need to go to the wizard, like we said a couple weeks ago. And you need to get some heart, some courage, and a brain. You need all of them. All right? And that's what I would tell him. You need a little tough love. Because it's sweet. It's really sweet out there with you on the court. Okay? Drop mic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so speaking about sweet, let's, <laughs> let's let's ease the tension down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> Those fightings. Oh, I was talking about my feelings. Those fightings. Oh, they not eight games Be back already. Huh? Before, before, well, before we started, <laughs> my man here had to play the crow with his mm -hmm. fork and stuff. Like, come mm -hmm. on, eat up. You about to eat this up like Jameis Winston? <laughs> I'm like, not yet. Not yet, my friends in Philadelphia, do not believe the tales of El Dorado that you are seeing right now. Do not. So you're going to double down? I'm doubling down. <laughs> like that horrible KFC sandwich you had to kill you, I'm doubling down. Listen, not only are my Phillies off of life support, <laughs> they're walking around the hospital room saying, a fan, we're going to make zombie. a complete recovery. No, that's a zombie oh. walking around. Do not, fool's gold, Listen, fool's gold, fool's gold. I only wanted them to be relevant to get me to Eagles football. Now, listen, true story. <laughs> I checked. The Atlanta Braves box score <laughs> to see okay. if they won or lost to see if we gained another game or not. It was just like I'm. Listen, you're doubling down. I'm doubling, I'm down. doubling down. We're gonna have when to bet. We're gonna have to Eagles bet. When the Eagles kick off, the Phillies will be in either first place in the division or first place in the wild card. I'm doubling down. <laughs> All right, we gotta bet something because I'm I'm doubling down yeah. that the Phillies will be <laughs> ten games out. Oh. <laughs> they start playing good teams again. They're gonna melt like Frosty the Snowman in July, man. It's it's done. It's fool's gold, Philadelphia. Do not make a necklace out of it because it's sticking to the magnet. I'm not. Uh, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. They the, beat the little sisters of the uh, poor and the schnooks. That team that Bugs Bunny played uh, played with back in the day against the Gas House Gorillas. Look it up. If you don't know what I'm, I'm just looking at the standards. <laughs> all right, all right. Standards of fools gold right now. Okay. So let's transition to our next segment. Let's close things up. Talk mm -hmm. about. We're almost there, and next week we're going to dedicate the majority of the show 
to the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL season. But let's go final cuts. Any surprises? Anything that stood out to you? We have our final roster. Looks like this is what the Eagles are going into week one with. Um, it's two things that made my uh, eyebrow raise a little bit. I can't really do it like The Rock. But um, the Garner Minshew acquisition. Yeah. And Zach Ertz saying, you know, he no longer wants out. And then the rumors about Goddard <laughs> <laughs> instantly. Um, I love Goddard. I love Howard. Here's what I would say. Them getting Minshew made me feel like they think they might be better than they're leading on. Like, to go out and get somebody who can, you know, keep the the boat afloat, so yeah. to speak, says to me. Because my impression was, God forbid, knock on wood, if Hurts got hurt, <laughs> yeah. that they would just – tank the rest of the season and try to get the highest pick as possible. Yeah, and but but an acquisition like that leads you to believe that, you know, they think that they may win a few games. They want to be able to keep the momentum going. Yeah, and if you look at a lot of the moves they've made on the column have been moves where it's like, okay, well, we possibly could contend. Really quick, I need a 30-second break. When they made the Minshew trade, I was on Twitter, and this goes for all the outsiders who aren't Eagles fans and stuff. They were acting like Gardner Minshew was like Joe Montana Jr. And, oh, he's going to take away Hurts. They got him. He's Jeff Garcia. Stop it. Stop it. Learn football. All right. Back to the normal conversation. Yeah. Um. And, and Zach Ertz coming into football, that, that's huge. Because as we spoke about, I believe, last week, you don't want nobody disgruntled. You don't want you want everybody to buy in. A new head coach, you're trying to set a new culture. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get everything going. So to have Zach buy in, I think that's huge. And I, I think it's a, another good sign going into the season. Now, having said all that, I'm still going to stay calm and I'm just evaluating. I'm not getting my hopes up, but I will say – Everything so far this preseason has been trending in the right direction. Yeah. And the thing about with people who always uh, try to make, always try, any any move the Eagles make, someone tries to make it more skullduggerous than it actually is. Mm -hmm. I think Howie's goal is to just, to, there was a serious lack of talent last year. Mm -hmm. He's trying to put as much talent on this roster, period. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of the Minshew trade. Um, They are more talented. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any doubt of that, but where does it lead? We don't know. And we'll go into more detail on that next week. I will say this, though. From watching what they're doing, I think in their front office, they're thinking, you know, this division is winnable. Like, it ain't like, you know, the Tampa Bay's not in this division. You know, the Rams not in this division. So I think they think these moves lead you to believe that they think, you know, we can win this division. Yeah, just think about it this way, and then we'll close. Um, If the Eagles had, like, a state of sustainable quarterback and you look at that roster, you would be like, they can contend. Mm -hmm. So if Hertz is a sustainable quarterback this year, they can contend bar an injury. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to close on that note because next week is going to be chock full of the NFL. We're going to look at all of the teams, all of the divisions. We're going to rip the Sixers some more (laughs) and the Phillies. (laughs) 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 Fool's gold. Fool's gold. He is in that lost city in El Dorado with all I'm going to say is Montezuma's revenge. Hey, listen, mid-September, we might have to shoot the show. (laughs) From the uh, Citizens Bank. <laughs> <laughs> what, we going to help the cleaning crew? <laughs> We're helping the cleaning crew out? Okay. Um, we get paid? <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you so much. Remember to follow us on all social media platforms. Thank you so much. I've been getting some really good feedback from people during the course of the week's Thank you for all your feedback. Please support. Pass it around. Like I said, we're trying to do things a little different. Trying to have the best 20 minutes of sports that you can enjoy. So, for my man, Do, this is the only big game thing in town. Philly Sports Dish. We'll see you next week. Shout out Bryce Harper.